Let me take you to my homeland. Bare feet, film the hot sand, chasing chicken, riding horses. These are my roots. My name is Augustina DePina, and I'm a senior at the John D. O'Brien. I spent the first eight years of my life in the island of Fogu in Cape Verde, where my parents grew up and only my mom went to high school. We were really poor. I remember sleeping on the floor hungry some nights, wearing one dress and no shoes. But I also remember feeling free and happy. I immigrated to the US when I was nine years of age. My parents brought me here for the opportunities, but I was terrified. I remember my first day of elementary school being the big yellow bus in the middle of strangers without knowing a word of English and entering a classroom where I did not know what to do or what to say, I placed myself in a comfort corner. I might have gotten lost right away if it weren't for my second grade teacher, Ms. Gomes. With her charismatic and intellectual teaching, she taught me English, and she made me see what was possible in my new country. In the Cavertian culture, women are taught that their dreams of success are their husband's dreams, and that they don't have a voice because the man has a voice. But in the United States, I saw things I've never seen before. Girls of all ages going to school, mothers working and being independent, and women striving to be a part of something. Ms. Gomes showed me that women can become queens without a king. <laughs> but I was still very shy. A quiet girl with a lot to say, but with no voice. For several years, I was this passionate student, very eager to go to school. My mom and dad were always supportive of me. I could see how hard they worked for my five siblings and me. My mom is a housekeeper at the Western Butterfront Hotel, and my dad is a cleaner at UMass Boston. They told me every day that I'm responsible for my future and my success. Mommy, Daddy, can you please stand up? However, <laughs> however, as classes became rigorous and the materials were harder to understand, my parents' motivational speeches were not simply enough. In sixth and seventh grade, I couldn't keep my grades up, and I began to lose drive in school. In eighth grade, though, I was lucky. I got a support network that kept me from going off track, and a group of people believed in my potential and gave me the knowledge and skills that have gotten me to where I am today. And these were the people from citizen schools. My team leader, Julianne, will always come over and talk with me. Every time I had a test or a quiz at school, Julianne will always come and help me study. Then, professionals from Putnam Investments came and taught us interview skills and two volunteers from Cho Holland Stewart, Eleanor and Kara, worked with me on writing essays that will be published in a magazine, and they became my mentors. And every Tuesdays and Thursdays, I took apprenticeships. I measured my school's carbon footprint, and I took creative writing the next. We created stories by observing regular day people doing daily activities. And my citizen teacher, Jennifer, made me read my poem in front of my peers, where I began to move my shyness. Julianne and the teaching fellows took us to visit eight different colleges, and I loved visiting Brown and Trinity. A panel of Trinity students talked to us about their experiences. Initially, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to college, but I remember one student talked about how Trinity made it possible for her to attend college and persevere. I knew if she could do it, I could overcome any obstacles I faced. And I am proud to say that I've been accepted to Clark University, where I'll be majoring in communications. <laughs> but I will not have made it to Clark or even be graduated from the great high school I attend without citizen schools. 
I wouldn't have discovered my passion for writing, and most importantly, the people I saw coming to my school and giving back made me realize my aspiration in life is to give back. I am currently writing and performing at Teen Voices Magazine, where I use writing to empower other teen girls. My dream is to start a nonprofit organization for girls to help them find the confidence that others have helped me find and give other girls the opportunities that many women have never received. All these people, Jennifer, Eleanor, Kara, they saw my talents and my potential at the right time in my life, and they helped me reveal it. I'm especially grateful for my team leader, Julianne, who came over and sat next to that shy girl. And I'm excited to say that Julianne is here tonight. Julianne, can you please stand? Thank you all. All of you in this room tonight are making it possible for teens to stay on track. Thank you, volunteers, and you who send employees to volunteer. Are change, you guys are changing kids' lives. You, your donations bring citizen schools to more schools and help students discover what they want to become in life and the drive to go to college. You realize that there is nothing more important than education, and you know that you have a role to play in helping these teens learn what they want to become in life. The girl who walked barefoot in the heat of the Caribbean sand without, with one dress, no money in her hand, is the same girl who's making her dreams come true. Now it's my turn to give back so everyone can see how that Caribbean girl who was a slave to poverty is now the masters of her destiny. Thank you.